Welcome, everybody, to Hope For You Freedom Conference. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. It is, it's finally here. The day we've waited a whole year for <laughs> is finally here. So yeah, I'm just so excited to have the um, Hope For You broadcast here in the sanctuary again with live audience. I'm so excited to have everybody here. We have people from Tennessee. We have from North Carolina and South Carolina all over. It's awesome. Thank yeah. you guys. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's just so exciting and it's such an honor to have everybody come here for this event because uh, I believe it's something God is really developing, growing, and building into. And I'm just so excited to have with me Pastors Eddie and Allie Smith. It's good to good be here. So. Praise the Lord. Amen, amen. And they're, you know, from Faith Family Church in South Car Jefferson, South mm -hmm. Carolina. Yes. And so that's just a few minutes away. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> right but, next door. <laughs> but that's right. But it's just, it's such an honor to have you all here. And we have different guests. We'll have um, Brother Tracy tomorrow and then uh, Pastor Joe and Tarasi on, on Friday. So I'm just excited, obviously. So um, before we jump into it, I just want to welcome again everybody and just say um, afterwards, one thing with this uh, broadcast is we want to do talk about um, you know our topic and hit the question that I've sent you guys and um, but afterwards if the Holy Spirit moves and wants to do something else uh, even though we may stop the broadcast it doesn't mean we stop ministering so there might be time of ministry prayer release uh, impartation whatever uh, I just want you guys to know you're free to flow with how the Holy Spirit has its freedom conference after all so Holy Spirit's free to do what he wants. You're free to flow. We're free to receive. Amen. You all are ready to receive? Praise God. So God is here. God is ready to just deliver uh, revelation that is going to change your lives and set people free. Amen. 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 So, again, thank you. Now we're going to jump into our topic. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, the question I have for you is, and last year I did one question. I asked all three uh, days and the question last year was how do you create an environment for the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. uh, or how do you create an atmosphere one of the, either way but the question for this year is how does our revelation of righteousness impact the Holy Spirit's ability to flow in our life amen what a wonderful question it's a question I think that every believer needs to have solidified in their hearts once and for all because without a revelation of righteousness, mm -hmm. people will continue to live with condemnation, mm -hmm. with a sense of unworthiness. It keeps people from being able to receive what God has for them. Yes. And before we get into that, let me just say I'm so grateful to be here. We love Hope City Church, yes, Pastor John and Shanti and all of your people. Mm -hmm. We appreciate those that have traveled from uh, other states, Pastor Brian and several of his people mm -hmm. from North Carolina, Pastor Archie. Mm -hmm. And so we're just honored to be back. I think this is our what, fourth or fifth year? Fourth. Fourth, fourth year. Mm -hmm. And um, we're just so thankful. We've been looking forward to this for a long time as well. And uh, there's certain things that God has put in my heart that we're going to be talking about on Saturday morning and Saturday night. And this morning... As we talk about this question, why is it so important that a believer has a revelation of righteousness? How does that affect their ability to flow with the Holy Spirit? You know, John Osteen once said, the number one need of every believer is a revelation of righteousness. Now for John Osteen to make such a statement, then it really needs to be you know, research. Mm -hmm. We need to do a deep dive into that. For a man like John Osteen to make that statement, yeah. out of all the revelations that he had, for him to say that the number one need that we should have is a revelation of righteousness, undoubtedly, there is so much in that statement <laughs> because as I look at my own ministry in life, I've been in the ministry now going on 49 years. Mm -hmm. And I could look back and I could see where many times people were not able to receive what we were trying to impart to them, what God was wanting to do for them, simply because they would say, well, I'm not worthy. worthy. Yes. I'm yeah. just so unworthy. 
Well, where does that sense of unworthiness come from? Mm -hmm. You know, when I was in a denominational church, now my wife grew up in uh, the same denomination, wonderful people, love God. I got saved in that denomination. Mm -hmm. um, when I did start going to church, when I was 18, got born again, one of the favorite scriptures that was used was Romans 3.23. And actually it was the first part of that scripture that they dwelled on. <laughs> it says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Yes. Now they no one, and I'm not just exaggerating here, okay? But I don't, do not remember anyone ever expounding on the glory part. Right. They never talked about that part. It was always all have sinned mm -hmm. and come short. And they really did not know what we'd come short of except for what the Bible said, the glory of God. And they didn't understand what the glory of God was, mm -hmm. which I'm gonna be talking about Saturday night. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times when we are focused on one thing, it literally consumes all of our thoughts. It consumes how we think, how we talk, how we live, how we respond, yeah. you know, yeah. to the word of God. Yeah. And so when you think, well, I'm just a sinner mm -hmm. and I sin every day, you know, I can't help it because I've been, you're taught this. You've been, you've been taught this all your life. Right. And so how can you expect to flow and to move with the Holy Spirit when you don't even know that you've been made righteous through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ? Yeah. Yeah. Thank God for the blood of Jesus. Amen. That's, right. That's the reason we tell people, you know, constantly, you plead the blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Plead the blood. Yes. When I come to the Lord in prayer, often I, I will begin, because the Bible says come boldly. How can you come boldly before the throne of grace unless you have a revelation of righteousness? Mm -hmm. That's true. Yep. 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 Talking about boldness, John even says in 1 John 4, 17, he says that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Mm -hmm. And he gives us the reason because as he is, yeah. so are we in this world. Mm -hmm. Right here, right. right now, present day, he says we are yes. as he is, not we're going to be one day in heaven in the sweet by and by, but right now in this world, we are as he is. Yeah. Yes. Well, what a lot of people don't understand is, you know, man's a spirit being. Mm -hmm. Jesus said God is a spirit. Mm -hmm. Well, we know that Genesis tells us that God created man in his own image, mm -hmm. in his own likeness. Therefore, man is a spirit being just like God is. Yeah. Right. Now he has a soul, which is his mind, his will, and his emotions. He lives in a physical body, but it's the part of man that, that's born again, it's the spirit of man. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's where we have been made righteous. Mm -hmm. And so the scripture tells us, now y'all jump in anytime y'all want to here. <laughs> now this is one of my favorite subjects. Well, we can go all day long. <laughs> the scripture tells us that if any man be in Christ, mm -hmm. he's a new creature. Yeah. He is. Yes. Now I have a, a reference Bible. It says the Greek says, let him be. So which one is true? I believe both is true. He is a new creature and let him be a new creature. Mm -hmm. Because in his spirit, the moment that we are born again, yes. we are made brand new. We are a new creation mm -hmm. that has never been before. Mm -hmm. But how many of you, we have a live audience here, so let me ask you this question. How many of you remember the day or the night that you got born again, raise your hand? Yes. So I know where I was, I know the spot in the old building church building that's now burnt down. <laughs> I remember it vividly, okay? Mm -hmm. Now let me ask you a question. How many of you, the next day, after you got born again, or the night you got born again, how many of you still had maybe a relationship problems that had not gone away, physical problems that had not gone away, financial problems that had not solved itself? Raise your hand. Mm -hmm. well, what does that mean? That means you are a new creation in spirit. Your spirit was made brand new. Mm -hmm. So Paul writes to the church and he says, put off the old man. Mm -hmm. Now King James, we know the conversation 
you know, means manner of life. You got to put that off and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Then he says, put on the new man, which after God is created. Where's the created? In the spirit. That's right. In righteousness mm -hmm. and true holiness. Yeah. So until we get a revelation that I am righteous because of Jesus, I am holy because mm -hmm. of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Peter says, be holy for it's written, I am holy. God says, I'm holy, be holy. Mm -hmm. In other words, he's saying, you have been made holy in your spirit yep. Yep. because you were created new in Christ. Now, let what God has done on the inside of you have its effect on the outside of you yeah. and live a holy life for everybody to see. Yes. Yeah. And it's a choice that we yeah. have to make, but it only will happen if we have a revelation mm -hmm. that first of all, I have been made righteous through the blood mm -hmm. of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Would you say that people who don't have or who are, haven't had that revelation yet, that they are very caught up in the natural because they look and they don't feel different. They don't see things different. They don't understand that their, their spirit, soul, and body, that three-part being, that it's began in their spirit and it's working its way out. Yep. I think people, when they, they, they agree they're saved and gonna go to heaven, but they don't really believe anything else has changed. And now they, they have to work for it. Like that word where it says, you know, I'm holy, be holy as I am holy. Yeah. They take that as if it's a works thing. They have to work their way to holiness instead of it's a command from God to be holy. Right. Do you think that there's a confusion with people and possibly, you know, before you were born again that you thought, I have to do something in order to obtain yes. that righteous? Yes. The church I grew up in, uh, every time we had revival, I got saved again because they never talked about our spirit. I... I had never heard that kind of talk. All we talked about was your soul. Yeah. You know, your, save yeah. your soul. We thought this was our soul. We didn't know this was our soul. <laughs> this, and so every time we had revival, because, you know, I got saved when I was 12, just like all good denominational girls. <laughs> and, <laughs> and so uh, every time we had revival, they would preach about hell like they just got back. And we would, I would... Every time, I'm talking every time they had an altar call, I was right back because I may have slipped up and cussed. I may have done this. I may have done that. And I thought, well, I'm not saved. Right. I'm not saved. And so I thought if I worked hard, I knew nothing, mm -hmm. nothing about what we're talking about today, about righteousness. It's the work that he did. It's not the work that we do. Yes, amen. And I tell you what, when I found out about it's because of Jesus that we're righteous. Yes. It's not, and you know, in a sense, we never were worthy. We can't work for mm -hmm. it, but he made us worthy. He made us worthy. Yes. And I tell you what, when I got that revelation, it freed up so much junk in my Amen. life. Amen. That righteous revelation will set you free. Yes, it will. It frees you. And that's, you know, with Freedom Conference, it's like we were talking yesterday that we, we're not really praying for people to for a new freedom to come. It's a revelation of the freedom that's already it's been given yes. to come out. Yes. And that's what revel the revelation of righteousness, because I think we all would love to have the gifts of the Spirit and the fruit of the Spirit manifest in our life on a daily basis. Uh, if you're here today, if you're watching online, I mean, I think we all have that desire. Yes. And the greater revelation we have of righteousness, the more that will take place in our life. Yeah. Yes because it's the foundation of which we grow from. It's the foundation of which the gifts happen from. Right, amen. Well, Pastor, I, what I discovered through the years, a lot of people, they are working in their thinking mm -hmm. to become more righteous, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all right? Yes. Now, 2 Corinthians 5.21 tells us that God made him who knew no sin to be made sin for us mm -hmm that we might be made the righteousness of God in him, in Christ. Yeah. So God made the Lord Jesus Christ to be sin mm -hmm. for us. Yeah. When we accepted Christ as our savior, when we acknowledged his finished work through his death, burial, and resurrection and confessed him as our Lord and savior, at that moment, we are born 
righteous. I'm talking about our spirit being. Mm -hmm. We are born and we have the righteousness of God in our spirit. Mm -hmm. And you can never be any more righteous than the day that you got saved. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of people, they're That's working radical. to try mm -hmm. to become more righteous. If I pray more, if I work harder, if I yeah. give more, if I fast more, mm -hmm. none of those things can make you any more righteous than you were the moment you were born again. Yeah. And that's the reason, you know, um, in, in Romans 12, Paul again is talking about the mind when he says, you know, be transformed mm -hmm. by the renewing of your mind. But he says, don't be conformed to this world. Mm -hmm. Don't be conformed to this world. I, I love to study it in the original Greek because it brings out, Paul brings out in that original Greek language what was happening. Mm -hmm. The people, they were, instead of allowing what was on the inside of them to reflect on the outside, mm -hmm. because God works from the inside out. Yeah. Satan, this world works from the outside in. Yeah. Instead of reflecting what was on the inside of them on the outside, they were allowing the outside world to cause them to come in line with the thinking of the, of the world, the thinking of the yeah, day, right, right. you know? The and culture. so he said, you gotta, you gotta let what's on the inside of here work its way out. Yeah. As a matter of fact, he said that in Philippians chapter two, mm -hmm. verse 12. <laughs> work out your own salvation. You know, I remember the first time I read that many, many years ago, and I thought, now in my natural thinking, way of thinking, I know that this can't be what I'm thinking. This cannot mean <laughs> what my mind is trying to tell me because we're saved by grace through faith, not right. of works, right, right? right. So I said, now Lord, this has got to have mm -hmm. a deeper meaning here. Mm -hmm. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Mm -hmm. And so as I did a, a, a real a deep study into that, I discovered that he said, you've got to cultivate. You've got to work out to the end. It's like a math problem on a board. You work at it and you work at it and work at it until you get the answer right. Yeah. Yeah. You work out your salvation until you get it right. <laughs> In other words, you may be struggling with a particular type of sin. Mm -hmm. You may be struggling in your marriage right now or in your finances, but the Bible teaches us that the salvation that God has provided for every one of us, it is not just for our spirit, Mm -hmm. It's for our soul. It's for our body. Yeah. It's for our family. Yes, that's right. Our finances. Yes. It's for every part yes. of life. Yes. That's totally. the reason I love what Jesus mm -hmm. said about I've come that you might have life mm -hmm. and that you might have it more abundantly. In other words, I want you to possess it, but I want you to keep possessing more and more and more. Yes. Why would Paul tell a young man named Timothy, number one, he's born again. Number two, he's filled with the Holy Ghost. Number three, He's called into the ministry. He's a mm -hmm. pastor. Why would he say to someone like that, fight the good fight of faith, lay hold of eternal life? He's selling the man who's already got eternal life. <laughs> Zoe, he's yeah. selling the man who's already got it to get more of it. Yeah. Why? Because the eternal <laughs> life that you have, there's more where that came from. That's right. And it can possess more and more of the broader sphere of your life. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Amen. And so for those that are saying, hey, I'm trying to um, become more righteous, forget about it. You cannot become more righteous. You can work out the righteousness of God that's on the inside of you. You can work it out so that people actually see you living a righteous life. Yes. And John even says, 1 John 3, 7, he that doeth righteousness, he said, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness, is righteous even as he, the Lord Jesus Christ, is righteous. Mm. Amen. 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 That's so good. It, it's so awesome just to understand and get a greater revelation of it because it, it, prepare, it, it, it helps change your mind. It convinces the soulless part of you mm -hmm. what's really truly happened. And so the negative thoughts, the thoughts like I'm not worthy and I, you know, you don't know what I've done, all those thoughts start becoming less and less and they're replaced with thoughts of he made me righteous he made me worthy he said i'm worth it 
and the Holy Spirit is, lives on the inside of me. So how, if I'm not righteous, how could that happen? That's right. You know, the logic of God outweighs the logic of this world. Yes. And so when we agree with God, it changes the dynamics and it allows something to start flowing, which is the power of God starts flowing through us. And I believe that's what we really saw with the uh, disciples on the day of Pentecost. The revelation of that they would receive the Holy Spirit and power. They didn't operate in too much power beforehand. But. They, they did things that Jesus commanded them to and told them to mm-hmm. do and he empowered them to do. But without him, they didn't really do, there wasn't any um, testimonies of things that they went around doing until the Holy Spirit came and lived in them. Yes. That had to be a convincing factor to them that what God said is what's happening. That's why he said, this is that. What God said yes. is that's what this is. And now the Holy Spirit's in us and now you see him going around doing all the mighty works and healings and uh, just tons of people coming into the kingdom. So how, how would you, how, what would be some things you would recommend to people in your church or here or listening today? How do you gain a more true revelation of righteousness? And as you're gaining it, how do you start letting the Holy Spirit flow in your life? Go ahead. <laughs> I'll, well, jump in. I'll jump in. Yeah. First of all, I would say, You've got to renew your mind with this revelation of who you are in Christ. Yeah. Okay? Yes. There are so many people that they do not see themselves in Christ. They see themselves as that old person. Mm -hmm. You know, Pastor John, I've been saying for years and years and years, a new creature, a new new person needs a new mind. (laughs) Because if, if they don't get the new mind that Paul talked about, you know, having the mind of Christ, which is an anointed mind. Mm-hmm. I mean, it really is. You, you can have an anointed mind. You, the anointing can be upon your mind so that you think the thoughts of God. Mm-hmm. And when you think the thoughts of God, of course, you're going to talk like God. You're going to act like God. You're going to yes. live the God kind of life, basically, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. And so it all goes back to having an understanding of the finished work of Christ. You know, I quoted Romans 3.23 earlier about all of sin to come short of the glory of God. One of my favorite translations is the Conabear translation. It says, none have obtained the glorious likeness of God. None have obtained that likeness because of coming short. Mm-hmm. All of sin came short, which means to lag behind, mm-hmm. to fail, of something, you know. And he said, basically, when you understand that you need Christ as your Savior, yeah. okay, all of sin, right? Mm-hmm. And the reason we'd sin was because it was our nature to sin. Mm-hmm. I mean, we were born in sin, as, as David said. Yeah. And so, therefore, every person must be born again. And except you be born again, you cannot see which the Greek word simply means to perceive or to understand. Not only can you not go to heaven, but you cannot understand heaven. You cannot understand the kingdom of God until you're born again. That's right. right. But when you're born again, you begin to have the ability by the Holy Spirit. He gives us revelation knowledge to understand what the kingdom of God is all about. Mm -hmm. And when Jesus came, introduced to the kingdom of God, he wanted to let the people know the first thing you've got to do is you've got to repent, which comes from a, a, a word which means, re means to do again, pent means to go to the top, which I firmly believe is you've got to go back to where we started. Mm-hmm. You've got to go back to the garden when God first created Adam and Eve, mm-hmm. where Adam and Eve were given total dominion, yes. crowned with glory and honor, David said, yes. right? Yes. Everything was put under their feet. Mm-hmm. Well, most Christians today, they won't even think about casting out a demon because they don't have a revelation that the demon's under the feet, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. They don't have a revelation that we've been seated, been seated yes. with the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. One of my grandsons recently, 12 years old, was asking me about this because at camp, he got into a discussion with some of the other youth about this. And uh, so I was explaining to him, I said, you know, imagine for a moment 
you got a sheriff, you know, he's the sheriff of the county, but he's got a lot of deputies that are under his authority, under his jurisdiction. Now, I said, when we say that we are seated mm -hmm. with Christ at the right hand of the Father, we're heirs of God, joint heirs with, with the Lord Jesus Christ, we're seated with him, I said, that's not talking uh, geographically. I said, because we can't be literally, you know, seated here in this chair and seated there in that chair mm -hmm. at the same time. Right. Right. That represents who we are as far as how God sees us. Mm -hmm. Yes. We have been given total authority no matter where we are in this world. Mm -hmm. yes. I said, that, that deputy, anywhere that he goes in the county, he is under the authority of the sheriff. Mm -hmm. He has jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. He has the power to you know, arrest people, stop people, write tickets or whatever he needs to do. Mm -hmm. So he has an understanding regardless of where he is geographically, he has the same authority. Mm -hmm. And we have to understand if we're ever gonna move and flow with the Holy Spirit to do the works that Jesus did, mm -hmm then we're gonna to have to have a revelation. I am been made righteous. And through that gift of righteousness, yes, 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 according yes. to Romans 5, 17, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and the abundance of grace and that gift of righteousness, then we're to be reigning as a yeah. king in this life yeah. under his authority, the one, the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Without him, apart from him, I'm nothing. I can do nothing. Mm -hmm but I'm not apart from him, <laughs> and neither is any believer. That's right. That's the reason Paul said, I can do all things yes. through Christ who strengthens me, mm -hmm. through the anointed one and through his anointing and the authority that he's given me, then I can cast out devils. Mm -hmm. I can lay hands on the sick and they recover. Praise God. Amen. We can do what he said to do. Amen. Yes. Amen. Now, think about it like this. In Romans 8, the scriptures tell us, tells us there is therefore now no condemnation to those that are what? In Christ. You're in Christ and you're walking not in the flesh, but after the spirit, right? Mm -hmm. Because to be carnal in mind is death. Mm -hmm. To be spiritual mind is life and peace. Mm -hmm. And so when your mind is renewed with God's word, you're spiritually minded. You're, you're comparing spiritual things with spiritual. You're thinking spiritually about every situation that you face and there's no condemnation. Mm -hmm. You know, condemnation, the best way I can really explain that word, if you was to imagine uh, pressing with your thumb down on a button, that's condemnation. You're putting something down, mm -hmm. okay? And God is not putting us down. That's right. He is lifting us up. Yes. He has raised us up. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Yes. I mean, we have literally <laughs> experienced a spiritual resurrection yes. when we were born again. Yes. Now, I know there's gonna be a literal resurrection one day, but we've already experienced a, a, a spiritual resurrection mm -hmm. where we're no longer bound to this body. We don't, right. We're not bound to this world, amen? Yes. We're not bound to the devil or demons. Mm -hmm. We're free. That's right. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 This is a freedom conference. <laughs> That's, That's right. And, and we just want everybody to be free. Hallelujah. That's right. And so, you experience that freedom, freedom to reign as a king in this life through a revelation of mm -hmm. the gift of righteousness. Mm -hmm. That's so good. Praise God. That's so good. And who we are in Christ. That's mm -hmm. who we are in Christ. You know, one night uh, we were having corporate prayer and I was leading prayer. And all of a sudden up in my spirit, the words came, take your seat, take your seat, take your seat. And at the same time, I just had like a vision of Jesus at the right hand of the Father, he's seated there. Mm -hmm. But we're not, like he said, you know, we're not literally seated there. But all these empty spaces were beside him. And it was spaces where people had not taken their seat. They're mm -hmm. still trying to fight the devil. They're still trying to do all this. But he called us to fight the good fight of faith. That's right. He didn't tell us to try to fight demons. Amen. You cast out demons. You don't fight them. Yes. But, but so many people are trying to work it out themselves. They're trying to do the fighting yeah. when we just have to relax. It's yeah. kind of like when, uh, you know, pastors aren't the only ones that are supposed to lay hands on the sick and they recover. Wow. We all, everybody should be doing that, <laughs> right? 
But I think a lot of people, because they don't realize that they are righteous mm -hmm. by the blood of Jesus, it's everything he did. They don't realize they are righteous, and so they are too afraid mm -hmm. to pray for somebody at Walmart. They're too afraid because they think they have to do something. I was young when I realized that my part is just laying hands on the sick. Yeah. I don't make them recover. That's Jesus' part. Just like when we witness to other people, we don't have to clean them up. We just catch them. Mm -hmm. That's his part. Amen. You know, when people leave your church as pastor, you know, people leave for various mm -hmm. reasons, mm -hmm. and I always pray for them, wish them well. Yeah. But, you know, when we were young in the ministry, it would hurt my feelings. You know, mm -hmm. my feelings would be hurt. Oh, what did we do? What could we have done different? But one day the Lord said, look, people are going to come. People are going to go. Mm -hmm. And you have taken this on yourself. Mm -hmm. You can't, I can't, say, somebody said the other day, Pastor Allie can't save me. No, I can't. <laughs> That's his That's job. Right. That's right. But when we work with him mm -hmm. and do our part. And you know, I always, every day, I remind myself, I try to every day, that the same spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead mm -hmm. dwells in me and you. Yes. And I tell you what, when you get that revelation, you know that when you go out in the world, there, greater is he that's in us yes. than he that's in the world. And we can be sensitive mm -hmm. to his Holy Spirit and he can lead us to witness to people. Yeah. We'll be in a restaurant as we travel mm -hmm. And the Lord will have us minister to waiters and waitresses a lot of times. Mm -hmm. And tears will just start flowing down their face. But nobody has taken the chance to tell them or have taken that opportunity to tell them that Jesus loves them. You know, sometimes that's all you have to say to someone. Yeah. Jesus loves you. Of course, if you give them a big tip, that helps too. But you know, <laughs> but you, know you get their attention. The tip is to get their attention, to let them know, yeah. you know, all Christians aren't stingy. Right. <laughs> you know, we're not stingy. And a lot of times, like one time, I don't remember where we were, but it was late at night. It was probably Pastor Tracy's meetings, but it was late at night. And the uh, only thing open was, what, Waterburger or whatever? Water, yeah. And the kids have to go there and eat. I ate my little lunch sack, but they have to go there and eat. So, uh, uh, we were in there and the Lord told me to bless our waitress mm -hmm. with a big tip. So I went in there and I said, I just want to tell you that God loves you and he told me to give you this. She looked down and she burst out crying. She started hugging me and I said, Jesus loves you. She said, I know he does. We walked out as we were getting in the car. She was running around telling everybody in the restaurant <laughs> she was jumping up and down yeah. but if I didn't know that I was righteous mm -hmm. I would feel unworthy to even tell somebody else that that's they right. can have the same thing that we have mm -hmm. amen amen that's so good and I think the the um, doubt about our own right about yes. being made righteous yes. prevents the holy spirit from impacting people from being people's able life. to show us what to do yes yeah cuz we might see something and have an unction to do yes. something but we look at ourselves and we're like oh, i can't do that and we're so self conscious because we're not god conscious amen amen you know pastor i, I just um, when i read the gospels and the ministry of the lord jesus i've just so, moved so often when i when i saw how he ministered to people. You know, he, he, he was not always pointing out their sin to them. You know, here's a woman. Imagine now, if you could just, in your mind, in your imagination, get this picture. Here's a woman who is taken in the very act of adultery. So undoubtedly, these guys just burst in the house or whatever mm -hmm. and drug her out of the bed. They didn't bring the man. Just, just the woman, right? right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, people are real quick to choose, uh, uh, you know, to make, well, we're going to condemn this one, but we're not going to condemn this one, you know. Right. Yeah. You know, he's part of the old buddy, men's club here, mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, she's kind of an outsider, so we're going to use her as yeah. an example. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, when they come to Jesus and they, they reminded him, 
of what Moses and the law said that she should be stoned. Mm-hmm. And everybody here knows, you know, he, he's just kind of kneels down and he starts writing with his finger in the sand. I have a feeling he was writing down some of their girlfriend's names <laughs> and uh, of some of their particular sins, you know. And, and they're watching what he's doing, you know. And when he looks up, they're all gone. <laughs> and he says, where are your accusers? Mm-hmm. You see? Yeah. And she said, there is none, Lord. He said, neither do I condemn thee. Neither do I what? Condemn, condemn thee. Condemn thee. I'm not going to put you down. That's right. Yeah. He wasn't condoning. He wasn't saying what you did was okay. Mm-hmm. That's right. Matter of fact, he said, neither do I condemn thee. Go, Go and, and sin, sin, sin no, no more. more. That's right. In other words, I want you to have a revelation mm-hmm. of the love of God. Yes. I want you to understand that you don't have to live with the condemnation, the accusation, mm-hmm. you can leave here with an understanding of the love and forgiveness of God. You know? Yes. That's what people need today. Right. Yeah. Yes. Instead of somebody always pointing out to them their sin. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I was uh, doing a series uh, recently at my church, and I, I told them a story. Uh, I had read somewhere years ago this person who was in the FBI they had been put into the, um, the department, you know, where they had to find counterfeiters, you know, mm-hmm. hunt down, track down, you know, counterfeiters. But he said, but the first thing we did for several weeks, we sat to study money. Mm-hmm. He said, now, am I thinking we're going to be looking at all the counterfeit money, all the different types of counterfeit in the world? He said, we never looked at counterfeit money. They gave us the real money. You know, I'm talking about from the United States, from other countries as well, but it was the real deal, okay? Genuine. We never, he said, we got so expert at the truth of the true money, he said, we could recognize a counterfeit just like that. Whereas somebody else normally wouldn't even be able to spot it. He said, as soon as they handed me a counterfeit bill, I could spot it. See, there's a spirit of error that John talks about. Mm -hmm. There's a spirit of antichrist. Mm -hmm. Those demonic spirits are the lead people in a wrong direction. We have denominations, we have religions. All they focus on is the bad part, you know? I mean, I remember, we didn't go to church much when I was a boy growing up. Uh, Every once in a while we, we would go, not very often though, and the only thing I can remember is the preachers were always preaching about our sin. And I mean, they started naming the sins, you know, and they just go down the list, you know. Yeah. I mean, like the top worst, you know, top 10 sins <laughs> or something like that. They just go down that list, you yeah, know. Yeah. And before they get through, everybody in there is feeling like, I wish I could just crawl under the bench or leave or something, you know, because they never talked about the righteousness of God. Mm-hmm. They never talked about you know, when I went, when I first started going to church as a teenager, well, 18 years old, when I first started going, here's what I heard. You're a sinner. You need Jesus. He died for your sins. But if you don't get saved, you're going to die and go to hell. And I heard that constantly, mm-hmm. right? Well, I got saved. I go back to the same church. Mm-hmm. Here's what I heard. <laughs> now that you're saved, the only difference is you're a saved sinner. I cannot find that creature in here. And if you can find that saved sinner in here, I want you to show me, okay? Amen. But where's what I, I found? They said the only difference is now you were a lost sinner, now you're a saved sinner, and that's the only difference. Well, I'm gonna tell you all something. And you're going to heaven. Yeah, and you're going to heaven now instead of going to hell. Yeah, congratulations. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Got my fire insurance. Praise God. Yeah. But you know, as I read my Bible, I don't know if I'm just, I think differently than other, most people or what, but I wanted to read every word and soak it in. Even the greetings when he would open up, when Paul and these guys yeah. would yeah. write these letters to the saints. And I'd say, to the what? Yeah. I said, wait a minute. <laughs> to the what? to the saints that are at Rome, mm-hmm. called to be saints. Yes. 
Yeah. Yeah. And I went to my pastor and I said, why does he call them saints mm -hmm. when y'all said we're all sinners? He said, I don't know. <laughs> Thank God, y'all. I had a, my pastor was a good man. He loved the Lord with all his heart. And he would not. He was honest. He was yeah. very honest. Mm -hmm. And matter of fact, when I started asking him questions about the baptism of the Holy Ghost, gifts of the Spirit speaking in tongues, he was honest with me. He said, I don't know. I'm not against it, but I don't know enough about it mm -hmm. to say yay or nay to help you in any kind of way. Well, that's good. I know it's in the Bible. Yeah. And so I discovered, folks, Paul was being led by the Holy Spirit and James and Peter and these guys to write to the saints, mm -hmm. which means that we've been saved or sanctified, it's all the same word mm -hmm. in the Greek, which means we've been set apart unto God. Yes. Well, how can we ever expect to do the works that Jesus did mm -hmm. unless we have a revelation that I am been made righteous with his righteousness? Yeah. Therefore, I am righteous as he is. Therefore, God is not looking at me as the old Eddie, okay? He's looking at me as the new Eddie, the one that's in Christ. And I am constantly, as I renew my mind, feeding on the word of God, I am sustaining the life of God. Not only am I sustaining the life of God by feeding on the word of God, Mm -hmm. I am possessing more and more of that life. Yes. Because just, just like, you know, when, when God put Adam and Eve in that garden, there's one tree they told mm -hmm. that they're not to eat of. I mean, they can eat of the tree of life and they should have been eating constantly of the tree of life. If you look up that word life in the Hebrew, it literally means one of the definition is to sustain or to preserve. Mm -hmm. By eating from that tree, they would have constantly or continually to sustain the life that God had breathed into them. Yes. In the beginning. Yeah. When they ate of that tree of the knowledge of the good and evil, the Holy Ghost revealed something to me here about a month or two ago I'd never seen before. They gained a knowledge that they were totally unaware of that it even existed before. There was a carnal knowledge that came upon them by disobeying mm -hmm. what God told them to do. Mm -hmm. And the Lord revealed to me, Jesus said, man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. He said to me, when you feed on my word, yes. you are literally sustaining my life that was imparted yeah. to your spirit when you got born again. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So that's something to take hold of. That's a nugget right there. Everybody yeah. needs to remember. Yeah. Feed on the word daily, yeah. praise God. Yeah, it'll sustain you. It's life. Amen. Yes. Amen. You know, this is a um, opportunity during, you know, this week to, real, to have the Holy Spirit reveal some old mindsets mm -hmm. and some old beliefs that we might have about ourselves or others or whatever. And let the Holy Spirit reveal, like, that's not who you are now. Yeah. And not only let him reveal it, but be ready and willing to release it. Because mm -hmm. so many times we've found our identity in the wrong place, yeah. in the wrong mirror. Mm -hmm. And we don't, we're not looking in the mirror of the word, we're looking in the mirror of our yeah. senses. And we hold on to those old identities. Yep. And one that's not founded in righteousness. And it's one that may be founded in our attempt to be righteous. Okay. And we've, we've fallen or we've failed in that. Um, how would you, how would you just like, just for, not just this week, but how do you encourage people? Like, like you just said, like get into where it will sustain you. How do you encourage them? Like stop thinking the wrong way. <laughs> like see yourself the way God sees you. What, how would you just, you know, lack of better terminology, just grab them, shake them into that reality. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Well, well they, you know, they have to re I wish we could renew their minds for them, don't you? <laughs> wish, I wish I could just, it's kind of like your kids, you just wish you could do it for them, <laughs> but you can't. Mm -hmm. but it, the, you, we just have to tell them over and over again, re, it's the renewing your mind. You can't live off of last year's manna. Mm -hmm. You can't yeah. live off, you can't, yes, we heard faith when we were at Ramah, yeah. but 
it, you can't ever not study faith again. I mean, it has to be a, it has to be a current. It yeah. has to be current. We can't live off of the stale manna. Mm -hmm. We can't live off of, well, I read that, uh, you know, when I got attacked not long ago. Yeah. I know healing scriptures. I know all, I know all those healing scriptures. But I'm going to tell you what, I dug into them. Right. I dug into them. It was not the time for me to be studying about financial prosperity. You need to be studying about, that, that wouldn't help me. <laughs> you know, all the money in the world wouldn't help. There's some things that all the money in the world won't help. That's right. And so you have to study whatever the devil's throwing at you. Yep. You know, and he, he, he comes and tries to find a foothold mm -hmm. in our lives. Yep. And we know, that, we know that we will be attacked because we live in this world. Mm -hmm. We know the devil's out there. But we can't just open the door and let him in. Right. Because, you know, he'll just do all these things. But... As far as trying to teach people that, you, you, it's a never-ending thing. If they only knew, and we tell them that, if you only knew when you renew your mind. Mm -hmm. And it's easy with a renewed mind to come in and praise God yeah. and to move in the gifts of the Spirit. But if you were so beat down, if all you can think about is how unworthy you are, you're not going to give God your highest praise. That's right. You're not going to. And you know, the Lord, I don't know about you, but the Lord speaks to me more when I'm praising him than any other time. Why is it? Because Allie don't have her mind on Allie. I have it on him. Right. I don't have it on everything that's going on around me. Mm -hmm. That is a time when we, we just come boldly before his throne yeah. and we just worship him. Mm -hmm. yes. That's, That's one of my favorite things to do is yeah. worship him. Yeah, amen. You know, worship is the highest form of prayer mm -hmm. that you can do. Yeah. And, and, it, and you get the mind of Christ when you worship him. Amen. And, you, and you know, there's things that you've been asking him about. Mm -hmm. Well, when you just set everything aside and you start worshiping him, all of a sudden it just starts coming to you. Yes. And you're like, oh, why didn't I think of that? Mm -hmm. Because you... We have to quiet our minds. Even when we're reading his word, we have to quiet our minds because our minds will start telling us, uh, you need to do this. You need to be doing laundry. You need to be washing dishes. You need to be doing... No, you need to be sitting at the feet of Jesus because that's going to change your life. That's right. That's going to change your life. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, we're told in Philemon verse 6, that we're to acknowledge every good thing that is in us in Christ mm -hmm. Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yes. Amplified Classic says to acknowledge every good thing that is in us in our identification mm -hmm. with Christ Jesus unto his glory. <laughs> as you look into the mirror of the word, mm -hmm. as James you know, makes reference to, he said you, you got to receive with meekness, teachableness, humbleness, the engrafted word which is able to save your soul. Mm -hmm. This right here. Mm -hmm. Now, we know he's writing to Christians because he calls them brethren mm -hmm. when he started the letter. Yeah. So we know he's writing to people who's already born again. He's not telling them you need to get saved again, born again again. He's saying, now that you're born again, you need to receive the word of God, be teachable, so that you can save your thinking. Mm -hmm. Because as a man thinketh, so is he. Right. So if I see myself any other way than God sees me, I'm already headed in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. yep. The reason so many people today are, are suffering with low self-esteem, mm -hmm. they have uh, just a terrible uh, self-image mm -hmm. because they're looking in the wrong mirror. Yeah. You know? My wife did years ago, she was doing a ladies meeting and uh, she had a handout and she, I don't, I don't think you even had the people to put their names on the handout, did you? Mm -mm. And one of the questions was, when you look in a mirror, what do you see? Mm. And, and I had it, a little box that you open it and there was a mirror inside each little box. Yeah, she had this little see. box with a mirror in it, they look in it and it really was kind of heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. Not everybody, but some of them would say ugly, mm -hmm. fat, failure, mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it, it was really sad to read some of the thoughts that people had about their own selves. Right. Well, see, now I don't know how you would, you can judge me as you want, 
But I personally, I look in the mirror of this word and I see myself, I'm God's favorite child. I just don't think God loves anybody else as much as he loves me. Therefore, there's nothing he won't do for me. That's right, yeah. There's nothing he doesn't want me to have. He wants me to have the best. He wants me to live in the best. I mean, drive the best. He wants me to experience divine help, Mm -hmm. divine prosperity, supernatural peace, joy. Now, let me ask you, with your knowledge of the word, is it true that God loves me more than he loves any of you? No. Huh? No. Nope. I think I saw somebody shoot the head. He doesn't. In your mind. I feel like he does. I have such a revelation of God's love and goodness and forgiveness and mercy and who I am in Christ. I know that when he looks at me, it's just like he's trying to figure out which one of y'all is Jesus and which one of Zed. Yeah. Huh? Because yeah. we look exactly alike to him. You look a lot better in Christ than you do in yourself. Yeah. 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 Right? Amen. Imagine that. When God looks at us, say Pastor John, he's placed the part of the Father God, okay? She's playing the part of Jesus. And I'm Eddie. In Christ, Eddie. Right? So he looks over here at us and he's, he wants to speak to Jesus and he's going. Which one of y'all, with the real true Jesus, please stand up. <laughs> the old game show, you know? Because he can't tell us apart. When you get that revelation, when you get that revelation, you will never again back down from the devil. You'll never fear anything again. You'll never again have condemnation in your life. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise Amen. That's, that's so true. And I love your reference because God looks at us because we're in Christ. Yes. And he sees us in Christ. And so, like you said, he's looking, he's like, he doesn't see a difference. And I love it. It it talks about when Jesus said, you know, let them be one as we are one. And that one is, it's, I love this phrasing. It says it's a seamless union. And I always think of it like with stitching on a shirt. Like you can see stitching, like where sleeves are connected Mm -hmm. and stuff. Yeah. But there's there's cloths that are so finely done that the seams are woven together in a way that you can't, can't see them. See them. Yes. So you don't know where the old and the new begin and where it ends. It's yes. all just one. Yes. And it looks identical and there's no separation in the identification. And that's the way I see us. Like when, when I think about us in Christ, it's that seamless union mm-hmm. and God doesn't know where one ends and where one begins because it all is the same. Yeah. And, yeah. and if we have a, if we doubt that our, we are righteous because of what Jesus did, we're basically saying, Jesus, you didn't do enough. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you have to do more because you don't, because what I've done supersedes what you did. Yeah. And that's a, not a place I would want to be. And he's already be. done it all. He defeated the devil. Yeah. Yeah. He, we just got to take it. We Amen. just got to take it. Live out the freedom. Live out yes. the righteousness that's in us. It's already been done. That's right. For us. That's right. Amen. Well, but now, People will misunderstand you when you get the revelation of what we're talking about. Yeah. You probably remember one time Jesus said, I and my father are one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they told him, I mean, they were, they were so angry with him for saying that they wanted to kill him. <laughs> they said, you make yourself equal to God. That's what he, that's, mm-hmm. the Bible said. Mm-hmm. They told him, you are making yourself equal to God by saying, I and my father are one. Well, guess what? That is true. He was one with the Father. (laughs) That's right. Did he not say to Philip, you've seen me, you've seen the Father? Mm -hmm. Well, what's the difference in Jesus saying, I am my Father in one, than the Apostle Paul writing and saying, he that's joined to the Lord is one spirit. Mm -hmm. That's right. (laughs) You're joined to the Lord when you were born again, you're one, just like a husband and wife to become one flesh, mm-hmm. yeah. we are joined with him, one spirit. Yeah. Amen? Mm-hmm. Amen? That's the kind of revelation God wants you to have. Yes. Will you be misunderstood? Yes. Will people say you're arrogant? Yes. <laughs> when you talk the way Jesus taught, mm-hmm. yeah. religious demons are going to come from yeah. everywhere. Mm-hmm. They're going to come out of the closets, out from under the beds. <laughs> out of the churches and everywhere else to attack you 
Well, who do you think you are? I don't think nothing. I know who I am. <laughs> Amen? Praise God. My mind's been renewed to the truth <laughs> that I am righteous. Yes. And because of that, the Holy Spirit flows through me. And we give him all the glory. That's yes. right. And all the glory. praise. It's nothing but we have done. It's we all keep because of what he's humble. done. We keep ourselves yes. humble. Yeah. Yeah. Because we, we know it's not us. It's him. Yes. Exactly. And it's, it's, it's a great, great uh, truth to live in is when you come up to a situation knowing that because you're in Christ, you're already victorious. Yes. Amen. He always leads us in, in, in Christ Jesus into victory. Yes. Amen. And it's, it's maintaining that in Christness. That's exactly, amen. And um, man, thank you guys so much. It's been awesome. It's already been an hour. Oh, wow. um, I know, time flies when you're having fun. Yes, amen. Amen. You want to see if they have any questions? Sure, sure. We can, uh, yeah, if you have any questions, <laughs> ask a question. I know we don't have uh, a microphone, but you can just raise your hand, ask it, I'll repeat it. Let me get one up now. We might as well uh, make, take this opportunity. No questions. <laughs> All right, Apostle Dale has a comment, just a second. He's bringing a mic. He's got it right there. Thank you, Pastor Brian. The comment was uh, out of Romans uh, 3.23, where it says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. I was reading another translation and it was really good because it helped me understand it. For all have sinned and are in need of the glory of God. And I think that sometimes we forget that when we sin, we need his help. When we make a mistake, when we err, when we fall Amen. short of what the world says, we have his best right there for us. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 They forget that the next verse just says, being justified freely. Yes. By the grace of through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Everybody stops and they, they make that their whole doctrine. Yeah. That's why, you know, that whole, we're just sinners saved by grace. No, no, no. Yeah. Which one? Exactly. Are you sinner or are you saved by grace? Exactly, amen. So, um, any other questions? All right. Well, you know, I, I always want to, uh, well, I'm gonna, I'll close this out, but I always wanna give the opportunity if, if people wanna sow into the revelation that they've received, Today, they can. Uh, if you're here in house, you can sew up here or you can uh, sew online um, in the uh, description of, or the, yeah, the description of the uh, broadcast, there's the link. So uh, they can give online through the app, through our website, however they wanna do it. But um, it's just so important when you receive something to sew into that uh, because there is a blessing attached to it. And, Amen. and this is, the Freedom Conference is uh, something that I've, you know, asked the Holy Spirit each year what to do, and he's done some things for us supernaturally yeah. to enable us to give what the desire in our heart is. Yes. So um, it's just amazing what he's done. So uh, I'll talk more about that probably tonight a little bit, but I, um, I just want to say thank you all for being here. If you need, if you do, if you're here and you want prayer or you need, uh, you just want some impartation and the Smiths are available. We're available to pray for you, but uh, there's, there's grace and there's peace here. And there is just that the anointing is f here to impact and change your life. If you're listening online, you can receive it where you're at. Uh, I would encourage you to be here tonight um, and be here every time you can possibly Amen. be here for Freedom Conference. Um, it's gonna be life, life changing. Amen. 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 Praise God. So, uh, do you mind closing us out in prayer? I would love to, but before I do, would it be okay if I yeah. just share a little bit more? Yeah, please. Um, you know, Paul talks about this righteousness that we're talking about. It's not a righteousness which is of the law. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So many people are still trying to obtain righteousness through works, mm -hmm. through good works. Mm -hmm. He, but this righteousness we're talking about is a righteousness which is by faith. Yeah. Now that I am, as um, David said, uh, old and gray-headed. <laughs> I like to say older and gray-headed. Yeah. Um, my heart's desire is to teach this generation, you know, the glory and the power of God. Mm -hmm. I fought against it for years as far as 
taking a role of a, of a, as a spiritual father until I finally said, okay, Lord, I'll do whatever you want me to do and accepted that role. And now that I have, I see the need for it more and more. We have so many people, too many born again, people filled with the Holy Spirit, love God with all their heart. They do not understand what it means to live by faith. I go to churches and they love the move of the Holy Ghost and they should. You have moves of the Holy Ghost in your church. We have it at our church. Yes, There's some, that's all they ever have is a move of the Holy Ghost. Mm. For years, I told my people, as long as the devil can beat your brains out out there in everyday life, mm -hmm. as long as the devil can defeat you in your marriage, in your physical body, in your financial situations, he doesn't care how much you come in here and run and shout. And you could turn somersaults if you want to, jump chairs, run the backs of the chairs if you want to. He doesn't care as long as he can beat you out there. And unless you understand living by faith, walking by faith, the righteousness that we have is by faith. We have faith in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. We have faith in his death, his burial, his resurrection, his ascension. Mm -hmm. We have faith in his promises. Yes. We build our life on it. And because we are walking by faith, that means that we agree with what he says. We don't say anything different than what he says. Mm -hmm. We confess what he says, and because we confess what he says, we possess his promises. That's right. You know, and this goes right along with with righteousness, mm -hmm. because if you'll study out that word righteousness in strong concordance, he brings it out. One of, one of his um, explanations of the word righteous means to be in a condition that you ought to be, a condition that is acceptable to God. So when he looks at you in Christ and he sees you're righteous, you're in a condition that's acceptable to him. But let me ask you this, have you accepted that in your mind? Right. And your way of thinking, have you accepted the fact that I am acceptable mm -hmm. to God in this condition that I'm in, in Christ? Mm -hmm. Because what's gonna happen if you haven't, you're gonna always, and we should judge ourselves, I know that. Judge yourself that you won't be judged. Be judged yeah. But if you're always judging yourself in light of what everybody else thinks about you, in light of what the old religious body you came out of taught you instead of the light of God's word, you're not gonna be living by faith and walking by faith and having victory. The thing that the, the Lord has been talking to me more and more about is teaching the churches wherever I go. There's a way to live that you can have victory mm -hmm. in your marriage, bringing up your children. You can have victory in your physical body your mental, I mean, he wants you to have mental well-being just like he wants you to have physical well-being. He wants you to have victory. And I'm seeing too many people that are not living in victory. Mm -hmm. Thanks be to God who always, always, I don't think that word was just thrown in there to fill up space. Mm -hmm. I think God meant for you to have victory all the time, every time. Yeah. That is, he didn't say you were gonna have battles. That's Brother right. Hagin used to tell us all the time, great victories come out of great battles. Yeah. He didn't say you're not gonna have battles. He said, don't, don't think it's strange when you do have them, the trials, right? But he said, I want you to have a victory in every battle, okay? You know, um, my wife and I have been married a long time. Does that mean that we've never had an argument? Have we never had a battle? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have. And she always wins. <laughs> <laughs> Thing is, we always come out the other side with victory. Yes. Okay? And you're not gonna see eye to eye whatever situations you encounter. That's right. Everything's not gonna go perfectly smooth mm -hmm. the way you would like for it to go, okay? But here's the thing. I'll be sitting I hope this doesn't come back on me. 
I'll be sitting with ministers at times and I'll be listening to them talk. And I wonder, let's say for example, they went to the same Bible school I went to, Rhema. And I'll, I'll say, honey, did they go to the same Bible school we went to? <laughs> did they sit under the same Kenneth Hagin that we knew? Mm-hmm. It's almost like, you know, Paul said, if anybody preaches any other gospel, right, right. I'm thinking, okay, is there another right. Rhema? Is there another Kenneth Hagin <laughs> that they set up under? Mm-hmm. Because I'm gonna tell you what, God supernaturally connected me with Brother Hagin. Mm-hmm. When he told me to hook my TV antenna to the back of my stereo, most of you have heard that testimony. Jesus told him, go and teach my people faith. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna tell y'all right now, I learned from the best. Mm-hmm. I learned from the best. And I've never forgotten one single word that he taught us concerning walking and living by faith. That's the reason you would hear Brother Hagin say, if they tied me to a tree and beat me all night long, they could not make me say that I'm not healed. <laughs> Remember that, Brother Dale? He would say, they could not force me, they couldn't make me say I'm not healed. Yeah. Praise God. Amen. And that's what you gotta get to. Yes. You gotta get to that point. Oh, if you slipped up and you did something you knew was not right, if you failed and you did sin, listen, don't wall in, in that failure. Get up. And repent. You know, repent. Say, God, I, I repent. Don't run from God. Yeah, run to him. Yeah. He said, I'll cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Yeah. The moment you confess that sin, that's it. Yeah. Don't wallow in it. Don't let the devil beat you over the head with it. Jump up and say, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Yeah. And what the devil wants you to do, he wants you to just say, you know, I'm gonna have a pity party right now for the next two or three days. I'm such a terrible sinner. You know, I'm such a failure. I can't ever get it right. I'm and the devil just. Church. I'm not going to church Sunday. Yeah, I'm not gonna go to church. <laughs> Amen. Amen. By his stripes I was healed. I am healed. I rebuke you, Satan, for it is written himself. Took my infirmity yes. and bear my sickness. Yes. Praise God. Amen. Amen. All right. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> You're supposed to pray now. <laughs> we got to pray. We got to pray. <laughs> we get to pray. We get to pray. Hallelujah. Thank you. As a matter of fact, while I'm praying, if anybody needs prayer, come on up right now. Father, we just thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your blessings. We thank you for your mercy, for you are good and your mercy endures forever. We praise you, Father God, for Jesus, your son, the only begotten son of God who took away the sin of the world, who died on that cross and shed his blood so that we could be forgiven and be made righteous. And I pray today, Father God, for every listener that they would hear what the Spirit of God is saying. And Father, that they would have a revelation that you would impart to them the spirit of revelation concerning righteousness. For we know, Lord, that you would have us to walk as Jesus walked, to live in total victory all the time, to be a demonstration, an example to this world of one who is born from heaven. We are not of this world even as Jesus is not of this world. We speak a language from heaven. We speak the native language of heaven which is faith. Father, we are so thankful for the impartation through the laying on of hands. Hallelujah. Glory. So we lay our hands on these, Lord, that have come, and as they release their faith, we just believe, Father God, that they will receive according to your word now. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We love you and we praise you that they receive that which they came for. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Father God. For this day, your eyes have been opened to see things that you've never seen before. For the enemy has tried to condemn you but he is defeated. 
and your eyes have been opened to behold yourself in the mirror of my word. And now from this day forward, you will begin to see yourself in a better light, in the light of my word than ever before in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Does that mean anything to you, sister? If it doesn't, just put it on the shelf. All right? I believe God is imparting to, 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 to individuals right now where the enemy is defeated and caused you to see yourself in a way that God doesn't see you. But the devil tells you this is the way God sees you. And this is nothing but a lie. Yes. Nothing but a lie. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Jesus, thank you. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. The name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Receive right now. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Tell me, Chris. Glory to God. Lift your hand, brother. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. See, it's happening to you. It's been going on with you for a while now. The, the, the revelation, the spirit of revelation is, is, is coming into your heart. Well, you're beginning to rise up and see yourself as a different man. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo, glory to God. It, 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 would, it, it would be almost as if uh, a man came in one Sunday with nothing but rags on, his head down, defeated, but then the next Sunday he walked in with his head up and he's got a top dollar suit on <laughs> with his shoes shining and his eyes are bright. He's got his head lifted because now he, he sees himself in a different light. Yes. That's what's happening to you, my brother. That's what's happening to you. Hallelujah. So be it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Woo, glory to Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo, praise God. Hallelujah, praise you, Jesus. Amen, amen, oh, amen. You, Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we just lay our hands and we believe, yes. Lord, for impartation yes. into my brother. Your will be done in yes. his life. Thank you, Father God for blessing him, helping him, opening doors for him, new opportunities, Father yes. God. I praise you, Lord, for giving all of these, your people, yes. that revelation of righteousness and what it means, Lord, to live and to walk by faith in yes. Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, praise Thank God. You. Amen. Thank you, Father. Praise God. Thank you, Father. Amen. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. <laughs> You know, um, Pastor Zach, I just, I just heard a while ago that there's a, he said there's a great lifting up. And whenever we were up in the broadcast for, um, for y'all's broadcast of Boomerang, it was, when we were talking about Jesus, like lifting Peter up out of the water, it was like, I just saw you for a second and it was like there was a lifting up that he's doing in your life. And it's, it's, it's a, like a, like he's pulling you out of something but he's setting you on something else that's even better. It's not that it was bad, but it's just not where you're going. And the other night I had this vision in prayer on Monday night of somebody who was coming up to a, like a super high stairwell, like a skyscraper, and, you were at the, and we were at the bottom of it. And it says, he said that like as we step up, he renews our strength. Every step is a, is a strength renewal. So you're never tired, you're never fatigued, you're never worn out. So the things he's showing you, don't be afraid to step up. Don't be afraid to move up with him and let him pull you up to that level. Don't, don't have a concern, don't have a thought of worry, don't, have, don't allow those to come in and distract you from where he's calling you because where he's calling you is so much higher than where you've been. And he's not saying, when you, again, where you've been is bad, but he's saying there's so much more. So keep stepping up in him. Keep taking that step. And you will be amazed at the renewing of your strength that takes place day by day by day. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Praise God. Thank, Thank you, God. you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hmm. Thank you, Jesus. You know, buddy, you're not here just, I know you were kind of a last minute coming. You're not here just for the technical stuff. You're not here just to do something. You're here to impart and to bring anointing with you and to receive something that is going to help propel you on in where you're going. 
See, that, I think that stepping up, like, there, it, it applies to a lot of people, but I just see you like, man, you are, you just like, you got on the plane this morning, like you just launched. You're launching. In this Freedom Conference, there is an anointing on it in this house, in this conference. And my, my dad prophesied this a couple of weeks ago that it's more, it's going to be more like a Freedom Camp meeting. Or it can't mean you get imparted to. You don't just, a conference, you might receive information, but it can't mean you're, a, there's an impartation. There's an impartation taking place. The hope for yous are not just a teaching time. It's an impartation time. The services at night aren't just a, hey, let's go hear a speaker. It's a time to receive what God is saying and receive what the Holy Spirit is imparting into each and every one of us because there's an impartation coming so that there's a release going out. Because we're not here just for us. We're here for all people to receive what Jesus has done for us. So you will receive. You will find freedom. But you're going to find peace. You're going to find joy in the release of what you've received. Because others need to be set free from the things that have been held you in bondage. I think, brother, I think we have another, another prayer. of your Holy Spirit, Lord, in the impartation through the laying on of hands to our sister, Father God. Strength to her body. Hallelujah. Ooh, glory. Mm. Thank you for blessing my sister, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just heard those words in my spirit. With long life will I show him my salvation. Hallelujah. Lay hold of that, sister. Long life. Healthy, strong, long, healthy life. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory. Thank you, Father. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I think I'll take hold of that one. Long life. Long, strong, healthy life. Praise God. Amen. <laughs> yes. The joy of our salvation. Amen. Thank you, Father. Well, thank you, Father, for this service, for this broadcast. Thank you for your gifts flowing through these meetings. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for just meeting us and being here for us, flowing into us and through us, giving us revelation of who we are to a greater degree in Christ. And the freedom that is in us is coming out and being revealed to us, coming out from our spirit into our mind, setting us free because Jesus has set us free. And who the Son sets free is free indeed. Amen. We thank you for now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. If you're still on the broadcast, thank you. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Uh, again, if you need, you, you need prayer or anything else, we're up here and available. We love you all. God bless.